Welcome to America This Week. Folks, 2020 will soon retire and make way for 2021. This year has been insane. Between the pandemic and the protests, there's been a whole lot of muck in the swamp. I'll never stop calling out the hypocrisy from the politicians to the media, and tonight is no exception. Donald Trump will be the last Republican president in my lifetime. Let me say that again. Donald Trump will be the last Republican president in my lifetime. He may be the last GOP president ever again. This week, the Electoral College confirmed Joe Biden as president number 46 of the United States of America. That prompted Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to throw in the towel. And pro-Trump media group Newsmax called Joe Biden president-elect for the very first time. You see, folks, Republican Party is in disarray. They're split between the pro-Trump wing of the party and the establishment old school wing. Meanwhile, the left is united, laughing all the way to the White House. Karl Rove, architect of the long shot Bush 43 presidency, this week called Trump a crybaby. Now Rove, ever the hypocrite, has cried about Trump beating his beloved low energy Jeb Bush like a drum in 2016 for four years. Rove, along with the other turncoat Republicans like Mitt Romney, Anthony Scaramucci, Mr. Kellyanne Conway, and many more, are the reason there will never be another Republican president. These Benedict Arnolds are ignoring the fact that 74 million people voted for Trump. He's a very popular president. I mean, Trump placed three Supreme Court justices, ensuring the court is conservative for a very long time. Now, I could list all of Trump's accomplishments, but the liberal media would accuse me of bias or misogyny or call me racist or just make stuff up just to get me not to mention anything that puts Trump in a positive light. They're bullies. That brings me to the media. The media is supposed to be the watchdogs. They're supposed to fairly and without bias report on the two sides, Democrats and Republicans. They should be like the referees in a game. 2020 proved that wrong. Trump exposed the media's dark underbelly. They're not fair. They're filled with bias. The referees are bought and paid for. It seemed anything Trump said, the media took the other side. Trump said Joe Biden may have been compromised by China and Hunter Biden's dealings. The media scoffed. And there is zero evidence that Hunter Biden or Joe Biden did anything wrong here. We should note, again, and you, you and I have said this on the air many times, there is no evidence that Joe Biden was you know, involved in any wrongdoing. Of course, want to note that there is no evidence that Joe Biden or Hunter Biden has done anything wrong. No evidence? Well, that was pre-election. We now know there was evidence. In fact, enough evidence for the FBI to be investigating Hunter Biden. And I assume Joe Biden back then, before the election. Wonder why that news didn't come out until after November 3rd. Or how about when Trump said he would deliver a vaccine by the end of the year? The media scoffed again. Left-wing host after host brought on anti-Trump pundit after pundit and doctor after doctor to discredit Trump's optimistic promise. The head of infectious diseases at the NIH had to stop President Trump from continuing to suggest that a vaccine is going to be here in a few months. I mean, it's a pretty stunning thing that this just happened. Stunning? Looks like we may be able to vaccinate up to 30 million Americans by year end. By the way, I have to wonder why the vaccine was announced 48 hours after Trump lost the election. I also have to metaphorically wonder what would have been the outcome of the election had the vaccine been announced 48 hours before the election rather than 48 hours after. So where's the media to clean up their 2020 messes? Nowhere in sight. You want to know why they're silent? They're silent now because they were never reporting information. Instead, they were delivering anti-Trump propaganda. Their goal was to elect Biden by discrediting literally everything Trump said. Meanwhile, the GOP stood by and did nothing. You'd almost think the establishment Republicans, Romney, Sass, and the anti-Trump posse, were hoping he'd lose so they could once again strut around in their well-heeled hallways made of cherry wood and fine Italian marble, waiting for their turn to be top dogs. See, Trump upset the apple cart, so to speak, and the swamp Republicans couldn't deal with that. One more time, without some kind of miracle, Trump will be the last Republican president.
The left has differences, but they stay united. Think about that for a second. They claim they're the future of America. They tell us they're all about diversity, yet they nominated a now 78-year-old white guy with a history of racist comments who sponsored the 1994 crime bill that incarcerated more black people than any other legislation. They nominated a guy who rightfully earned the nickname Creepy Joe Biden, yet they stuck together while they elected their guy, flawed as he is. Meanwhile, the GOP split. Crybaby establishment Republicans pouted and they stayed home. Meanwhile, the media referees look the other way on Hunter's laptop and the vaccine. That's why I think Trump will be the last GOP president. How can you beat a cohesive opponent while your team is fractured and the referees are set on you losing? You can't. So RIP GOP, you all had a great run. Now to my conservative friends, strap on your seatbelts. It's gonna get really bumpy around these parts. And you better get ready for some really woke cancel culture BS just over the horizon.